Kings, I met a young man who is a firebrand from Sweet Home, Alabama. John Wathen has, uh, he does a lot of things. He represents the Hurricane Creek Keepers, which is a branch, as I understand it, of Water Keepers Alliance. Works closely with Robert Kennedy Jr., who is a environmental advocate. And uh, he is one hell of a man. I've come to know, respect, and greatly admire this man. So please welcome to the stage, John Wathen. Hello everybody, my name is John Wathen and I am your Hurricane Creek Keeper. The reason I tell people I'm your Hurricane Creek Keeper is because Hurricane Creek belongs to the people of the United States. It's not a waste conduit for the fat cats in the coal mines that would dump this crap down my stream. Just like the Gulf of Mexico belongs to the people of the United States of America, everybody in America has a right to go down and catch a fish out of the Gulf and eat that fish and not have to worry about what toxins are in the, fi in the, in the flesh of that fish. Those rights have been stolen from us, folks. They've been stolen from us by a bunch of fat cats from across the water who came over here and condemned our way of life. They not only condemned our Gulf of Mexico, but they condemned our way of life. Yes. This is not just an environmental issue. It's a social issue. When one group of people can come across the waters and condemn another whole race of people's way of life for profit, that should be considered a crime. Someone needs to be held accountable. We spent a lot of time putting up this little thing here to make some shade out of it, but I'm afraid just like uh, Thad Allen's truth, the shade just doesn't exist today. There's a lot of shade that's been fed to the American people. You have not been told the truth from day one, I promise you. I went down there right shortly after this mess started, and with the help of a group called South Wings, if you've never heard of them, look them up. Conservation through aviation. They're absolutely the angels in the sky that allowed me to get in an airplane and go out there and bring back the truth. In May, I flew out over it. Because of a thunderstorm, we couldn't get to ground zero. I couldn't actually see the source of the BP slick. But at 20 miles from the rig, the Gulf of Mexico in every direction as far as I could see was covered with a red, red, heavy, uh, crude oil. I told myself then that it looked like the Gulf was bleeding. That phrase got coined in a video that I later produced. It went viral. And Americans, Germans, Russians, people in Saudi Arabia all responded. That message went around the world because the for-profit medias were sitting on their butts taking orders from BP's Thad Allen. The truth was not told. The second flight when I went out was the first time that I'd encountered one of the in-situ burns. We got all the way out to the source this time. We flew around and there was a cloud of smoke that came up off the water. It went 4,500 feet in the air and stretched out damn near all the way to the Florida coast. It was incredible what I saw. When I came back and made the next video, I made the statement that I felt like for the first time in my life, it was hopeless. There was no way to stop what was happening to the Gulf of Mexico. All the promises from BP's Thad Allen and all the failures that call themselves restoration experts that came in and said we could keep it out of our marshes, they were lying to us, folks. You can't stop something that big. It never should have been drilled in the first place if they couldn't control it. Nowhere in the world should anybody punch a hole into the grandmother if you're not prepared to suffer the consequences for what you've done. We breached something down there that nobody's ever dealt with. The Russians came in and said, you people are crazy for doing this. You shouldn't be down there. We've actually penetrated something that I don't think anybody had any, any conscious thought of what the possibilities were except those that were making profit off of our losses. 
I visited the people in Barataria, Louisiana. I have good friends there with the Louisiana Bayou Keeper, Chapalaya Bayou Keeper, Louisiana Environmental Action Network. All of these people were coming together at one time. And when I went down there to visit with them, I felt like there was a pallor in the air. There were people mourning. They were mourning the loss of their way of life. They were mourning for something that they didn't know they would ever be able to recover. Fathers teach their children like their fathers taught them. The day you can get up and get on your feet and get out on that shrimp boat, you go help or you're crabbing. You're in your payroll out there doing something in the water. This is the way of life that was taken away. It's not an environmental issue, it's a social issue. I also work with the Citizens Coal Council. I'm chairman of the board of directors of one of the most powerful coal organizations in the world dealing with human rights issues. This is not much different. The difference in this is only in, in, in the coal fight, in mountaintop removal, they come in and they take off the whole top of our mountains. They dump them into the streams, they cover up the valleys, they don't pollute the water, they cover it up. Over 2,000 miles of American waterways in Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky have been covered up by mountaintop removal. It's extraction technology, people. It's extraction technology. It's extracting the grandmother's bowels. In Illinois, in the nation's breadbasket, where we feed people around the world, long wall mining is subsiding the breadbasket's farmland. We've now got wetland species standing in cornfields. This is not right. It's for profit. It's not right. But we, the people, are suffering for it. Why should I and the people in the coal country and in the Gulf of Mexico be considered the nation's energy sacrifice zone? We are human beings and we have rights. But more than that, we are a community of human beings. This is not just an American issue. We all wanted to come out and blame the Brits for this right off the bat. British Petroleum, right? BP, bad people, all this good stuff, brown pelicans, all the new names we gave them. Fact is, BP is only owned 41%, I think, by, no, 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 Americans own 41% of BP. English only own 42%. We're only 1% less culpable in this country for what happened out there than anybody in Britain. It's a way of life that we've chosen in America. We have to have our SUVs. You can't go in New York City and find a, a building with the lights turned off for crying out loud. This is the city that never sleeps. Whether they're asleep or not, the lights have got to be on. That's bull crap. We have got to start conserving what little bit of natural resource we have left, folks, or it ain't going to be there for our children and our children's children. We didn't inherit this earth from our grandparents. We only borrow it from our grandchildren. And we have an obligation to those grandchildren to give it back in better shape than we found it. And right now, we're not living up to that obligation. I am ashamed of what I'm seeing in the Gulf of Mexico today. Our grandchildren's heritage is being flushed down the toilet down there. We've had another rig. Maybe you didn't hear about it. Another rig blew up just last week. The day it blew up, there was an oil slick, according to the Coast Guard. An hour later, mysteriously, there was no oil slick. The next day, there's an oil slick. Come on, man, give me a break. All we ask for is the damn truth. We're not stupid. We may not have, some of us may not have the college educations of some of these fat cats in suit and ties over here in the big gray building. It ain't a White House. It's a gray building. There, you know, the, the, there's some... There's some funny things going on in there. But while we may not be the most educated folks in the world, we're damn sure not the most stupid people in the world. And you can't come in and tell me that what I videotaped on July the 19th, July the 21st, those massive red oil slicks that were out there, you can't tell me it mysteriously disappeared. It was dispersed. It was put into the water column. It's no longer on top of the water. It's a part of the water column which means that it can evaporate back into the air and rain back down on us. If you think that you're immune to this in Washington, D.C., you are wrong. The prevailing winds from the Gulf of Mexico are potentially toxic. In the right weather, that oil is coming up out of the water. 
on the 21st, the last flight that I took out over the Gulf, when we landed the airplane, we flew through no rain that day. We didn't fly through any smoke that day. When we landed that airplane, it was covered with oil. The, it was orange. The leading edge of that aircraft, every wing, every strut, every wheel, even the rivets on the skin of the airplane were orange with the oil that was in the air we flew through. I got sick the day after. And my nose started running. Then it got to be a little scratchy. Two days later, I'm running back and forth to the bathroom, and I'm not the only one. This is happening all over the Gulf right now, folks. And you ain't hearing about it because these fat cats right over here and right behind me have put a media shutdown on the truth. Yes! We're not going to stand for that any longer. I'm calling for every citizen in the Gulf of Mexico to buy a camera, a cheap camera, whatever you can get, and document what these liars are doing to us. Because if we don't, nobody's going to tell our story, I promise you. It is our story, but it's also the world's story. I went to Baja, Mexico for the Waterkeeper Conference. I'm a member of the Waterkeeper Alliance. We're an international federation of groups like mine around the world. In Baja, California, I met the ex-president of Mexico. He came over to me, he shook my hand and said, young man, I've been following your work. I thank you for what you do. And he staged a photograph with the Louisiana Bayou, I mean the uh, Lower Mississippi River Keeper and the president of Mexico holding hands, hands across the Gulf of Mexico. This is an international issue. It is a world issue. It is a social issue and it cannot be tolerated any longer. <laughs> We must have accountability. Yes. When this government tells us something, we should be able to believe it and not go back out and have to have people like me refute them. We need to believe in our government. We need our Coast Guard to step up to the plate and take care of us. I understand this was in international waters and rules are applied, but 12 miles of that water belongs to the United States of America and our Coast Guard should have been there in force protecting our shores. Damn bad uh, BP and Thad Allen. This is our shoreline and we want it back. Yes. Folks, we got a long way to go. You're hearing that the cap's on and the oil's gone. The, that's the beginning of this story. That is only the beginning of the restoration of the Gulf of Mexico. We've got a long, long way to go. And we need your help, America. We need everybody to pay attention to what's happening down there and come to these rallies. Support the groups. Save our Gulf. We've got several groups down there that are operating on shoestring budgets that need your help. Come and help us. Bridge the Gulf is another fantastic outlet down there. If you want to know what's happening on the Gulf of Mexico today, talk to somebody in one of these groups. Save our Gulf. Bridge the Gulf. Call Derek Evans. These people know what's going on, and they'll put you where you need to be if you want to come and volunteer. I'm John Wathen. I'm your Hurricane Creek Keeper, and I'm pissed off, y'all. Hey, I want to tell you something. When y'all all heard from New Orleans about the Houdat people, this is voodoo dat. There's some bad shit going on down there, y'all, and we need some badass voodoo to make it right. That's what I told you. He's a firebrand, John Walton. Good job, Johnny. Thank you.